Hey everybody, this is The Great Escape, and thank you for joining me on another episode of our Redstone textbook. Um, as you can see, we uh, updated the sign. We now have some cheering fans in the background, um, and my uh, lab assistants are just wandering around looking at things. But today, in today's episode, we're going to look at our next uh, piece of Redstone uh, device or component, and that's going to be the Redstone torch and the Redstone block. Um, these are both constant activators uh, or constant power sources, and we're going to see some of the way they work, what some of the quirks are and how you can use them in your world. Um, and uh, we'll jump right in it into lesson one. All right, so for lesson number one, we're gonna look at the way in which redstone uh, torches and blocks actually deliver their power. And we're back here behind our, our, our big redstone sign. Um, and as you can see, just like last time when we were talking about in general redstone power, uh, we've got our little uh, block of redstone lamps here. And the cool and unique thing about the redstone torch, unlike the pressure plate and all those other things that we tested out in the last episode, it does not deliver any power to any blocks underneath it. Um, now, uh, like, dust running into a block. If you place a torch adjacent to a torch, those torches are going to be weakly powered, so they will not transfer their signal to any blocks around them how, or on top of them. However, if I place a block on top of the torch, that block is now not weakly powered. It's actually strongly powered by this block, so any of the blocks I place adjacent to it will be powered. Um, so. Redstone torches are really interesting and unique because they provide both weak power, so it doesn't transfer that signal, and it apply, uh, it provides strong power, so it will transfer that signal. Uh, so torches are incredibly useful for uh, in this way here. Now, redstone blocks are slightly different than redstone torches. What you want to think about with redstone blocks is that they themselves are a powered block. Uh, so just like in this setup here, this block is a powered block. So anything that you put on top of that is gonna be powered. So redstone t blocks themselves are a powered block. So notice they don't affect any blocks around, but they are affecting that block down there. So let's get rid of the unpowered blocks. And because it's a, t a powered block, it's gonna get that block, this block, this block, this block, and that block. However, it's a power block, it's not transferring that signal into those blocks, so anything adjacent to those will not be powered. Uh, the other cool thing about the redstone block versus the redstone torch is that you can actually move it. Um, and we'll talk more about this when we get into pistons and things later on, but just so you can kind of see, obviously if I were to put a torch here and then power that, the torch gets broken, uh, but I can move our redstone uh, block. And so I can move it into a powered situation where I want it to power dust or other things like that. All right, so next on to lesson number two. Okay, so for our second lesson, uh, quick and simple, uh, redstone dust, uh, sorry, redstone blocks are gonna put out a 15 block uh, power signal just like any other uh, of the redstone sources we saw in our last video. Uh, there are some videos that do not put out a 15 signal um, thing and we'll look at those. Uh, and that is going to apply to both dust adjacent to it on any of the corners, uh, dust on top of it and also dust beneath it. Uh, so you can have dust kind of uh, in this situation do that. Uh, redstone torches are exactly the same. Uh, so you've got the, the redstone signal going that way. However, redstone torches, because they don't power anything beneath them, will not power dust that is beneath them. Uh, even if I go under this block here, you can see none of that is gonna be powered, uh, but it will power redstone dust on top of blocks because again this redstone torch is powering this block that block is powering that dust uh, so you can kind of uh, see how it powers in that way. For lesson three we're going to look at some of the quirks of the redstone torch um, and so because the way a redstone torch works uh, it actually has two settings so right here we see a redstone torch that's on it's powered it's going to power this block but now if this block is powered and I place a torch on top of it the redstone torch turns off. And so as you can see, a redstone torch has two settings. It has an on setting and an off setting. So this one's providing power, this one is not. So if I put another block on top of it like this, this block is not powered. So if I put another torch on top of that, that block is, that torch is tower, or powered. Um, and you can alternate this going all the way up, uh, kind of like this. Now, uh, so you get this alternating pattern of on, off, on, off. Now, this torch right here will, will activate a redstone lamp, but this torch will not. As you can see, 
that's gonna that pattern will continue like this going all the way up to the top like that and if we were to carry the signal one more block you'd see we get no activation there uh, however because of the way that redstone torches work if I were to unpower this block or unpower this torch this block would be unpowered that torch would turn on uh, so let's really quickly go ahead and do that and let's put some power into this block here and you see the torch turned off the light turned off this block is no longer powered so this torch turns on that light turns off and as you can see we alternated our signal going all the way up to the top and that's going to happen when we turn it back on and when we turn it off like this and as you can see there's a slight delay um, when this block goes unpowered um, it's going to take about 0.1 seconds for this signal to go so we're looking at it you know like at this height one two three four five we're looking at you know half a second delay between the bottom and the top like that um, so you can use this to transfer a redstone signal going all the way up to the top of the sky limit if you want uh, without any worry about uh, you know like with the dust you only have a 15 block limit and you have to kind of figure out a way to extend that uh, here you can take that signal all the way up but it does have the added problem of a slight delay between the signals going up whereas with the redstone dust tower that we looked at last week um, that one was an instantaneous transmission now another quick uh, quirk about redstone uh, torches is something called redstone burnout uh, and let me just quickly clear this and gather what I need to make a burnout system now uh, because of what we just saw here, where when a redstone uh, is on a unpowered block, it is it can be powered. Uh, but if this block is now powered, uh, so anything that you put on top of that like that is going to look like there. Um, so what happens if uh, I make this torch go on and off and on and off really, really fast? Well, this is what's going to create uh, what's going to be called a redstone torch burnout. Uh, and so the way this works, and I'll show you really quickly what it looks like. And see the torch burn out. It actually made a little hissing sound. Uh, and the only way to reactivate it is to give it a block update. But it's going to burn out again. Um, the way this works is this torch is powering this block. Uh, the redstone dust here takes power from this block. And it gets powered. And then that powers the block underneath it. Because this block is powered, this torch turns off. And that cycle repeats as quick as you possibly can. It's more than eight times uh, per, I think, 60 game ticks to create a, uh, a clock. Now, why would you want to do something like that? We'll get into a lot of detail about the usefulness of things like this later on, but it is important to remember. But just so you can kind of see one of the potential applications, these things have not been in the textbook yet. Um, is this system here so as you can see right now there's no power going in but if I were to put the block on top boop. now the torch burnt out the torch is not providing any power anymore and in fact I can delete that and as you can see that signal is traveling incredibly fast around in a loop here and this is a burnout clock uh, and we'll talk about those in more detail when we get to repeaters and uh, creating redstone uh, devices and signals and things like that all right next lesson all right, and for our final lesson on redstone blocks uh, and torches is kind of how they work as activators. Um, so they both are provide a constant and permanent redstone signal. Uh, the only exception, of course, is if I were to turn that torch off. It's not providing any signal at all now, uh, but uh, they provide a permanent redstone signal output. So uh, you can use them to do things like this, where I've now got a powered rail system. Uh, now, if I don't want to waste nine redstone for that block and do that, I can do this. Um, but uh, so now you can uh, power your rail systems going out with just a torch or a block. Uh, you can use them to power uh, pistons and have them permanently on. Uh, you can also use them to power TNT. But it's kind of a one-off thing. Uh, once you've done that, the torches, well, no, there it is. Um, you can sometimes pick up your, your devices, but you've also got a giant TNT hole in the ground like that. Uh, so 
Um, those are just some of the various things. And we'll get into more detail as we look at some more of our other devices uh, about how you can use redstone torches and redstone blocks in your devices uh, to provide that constant power. The alternating tower structure of, of torches and things like that are also incredibly useful in your redstone devices. Um, so uh, that is the final lesson. So thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me uh, for today's episode. Uh, this is lesson two in our Redstone textbook. Uh, and next episode, we are going to start looking at some of our other uh, power sources and activators. So we've already been playing around a little bit with levers just to show th some things off. But we'll talk about buttons, pressure plates, both varieties, uh, daylight sensors, which are kind of like our torches and um, blocks, but in a different way, uh, trip wires, trap chests and the observer. Um, so uh, thank you so much. If you enjoyed this video and if you liked something or learned something about it, please drop a like um, and then uh, maybe subscribe if you'd like to see more videos in this series or if you'd like to check out some more of my tutorials. Um, but thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, thank you. Um, and this has been The Great Escape and I'll see you next time.